Hey, Sam here again. Welcome to another tutorial episode on the modulation effects from Arturia. In this video, we'll be going in depth with the Phaser Bitron, its heritage, its unique design, and some outside the box creative uses. Let's get into it. During the 70s, technology was advancing faster than ever, and curiosity was at an all time high. Bold musical innovations paved the way for new sounds, new techniques, and the formation of new genres left, right, and centre. One such effect left a lasting impression that's as potent today as ever the phaser. Its distinct whooshing sound became a sonic essential, both in the studio and on stage, famously used by everyone from Jimi Hendrix to Smashing Pumpkins to Daft Punk. 1974 saw the release of a particularly prominent dual phaser that would go on to become a modulation legend. Decades later, inspired by this unit's legendary heritage, we're bringing our own feature-rich software recreation that will enhance your sonic palette in all manner of weird and wonderful ways. Phaser Bytron is a dual phaser with multiple poles per phaser circuit and two supercharged sweep generators. It features all of the original functionality, plus a few of our own extra enhancements. Settings-wise, make sure to check out the top left corner bar, where you can access preset saving and importing options, as well as find introductory in-app tutorials and resizing the GUI to fit your screen. There's also an output trimmer in the bottom part of the effect to help you adjust the output level of the effect. The front panel starts with two sweep generators that provide the movement for both phases. You can think of them as LFOs with a rate parameter that changes the speed of the modulation. And a few waveform shape options. The original unit had sine and square waveforms, but you'll notice that we added a ramp shape too. What's also new is the implementation of the synchronized time division for the generator's rate parameter. This means you can sync the sweep to the host tempo. Another feature to explore is the manual and pedal rate control options. This means that you control Generator 1's rate parameter not only with its dedicated knob, but also with this super slick expression pedal that's attached to the main interface. Just like this. The second sweep generator keeps it nice and simple. It comes with three waveform shapes and the rate control with the same time division synchronization option. As you might have already guessed, the cool thing about having two sweep generators is that we can provide double the modulation for each of the phaser circuits. One could be very slow and smooth, coming from the Gen 1 with a sine shape. While the other, coming from Gen 2, could be more gritty and animated with a faster rate and the ramp waveform. So that's already plenty of colourful variety in Phaser Bytron's sound shaping capabilities, but this is really just the beginning. The more we explore, the more interesting it gets. 
The unique thing about both phasers is that they're equipped with individual depth controls for each sweep generator. This is something that we've added to ensure more flexibility in the sound shaping process. This means that both of them can receive a mixture of the combined sweep signals from generator 1 and 2, creating a unique sum of the different sweep behaviours. This is another enhancement that we added that will unlock plenty of unexpected sweet spots and interesting textures. Both phaser circuits also come with dedicated on and off switches, which allow you to listen to each one in isolation if you prefer. You'll also notice the switches that select the modulation, or sweep, source. Choose between gen or pedal to determine whether it's the sweep generators or the pedal that will be modulating each phaser circuit. Or set it to both and take advantage of the double modulation source. Lastly, the feedback parameter will allow you to set the amount of the affected or phased signal back into the input. This creates that unique resonant effect by emphasising frequencies in between notches. We can easily see how this action makes the notches a bit more edgy and sharpened in contrast to being smoother when the feedback isn't there. The only difference between the features of phaser A and phaser B is the sweep reverse function built into phaser B. The reversed version will simply reverse the sweep's waveform shape. Another new addition is the advanced routing possibilities for both phasers. In both the mono and stereo versions of the plugin, the two phaser modules can be set in parallel, like this, or in series, like this. Both settings make a major difference to the signal path, which in turn drastically affects the final sound. As with all of our effects, the advanced panel unlocks a variety of new creative tools to enrich the plugin's sound. You can access it by pressing this little arrow. Inside, you're presented with a 12 dB slope high pass filter that allows you to affect the unwanted lower frequencies in the wet signal. This can be useful for retaining signal clarity and how the effect sits in a mix by avoiding muddiness in the low end. Another crucial addition comes with the possibility to choose how many poles are being used for each phaser circuit. It simply allows you to determine how many all-pass filters will be applied to each phaser module. This in turn alters the character of the sweeps by creating more notches. Let's listen to the differences between the varying numbers of poles. Two poles. Four poles. Six poles, eight poles, ten poles, and twelve poles. As you can hear, the more poles we introduce, the brighter the sound gets. The sweeps become more prominent, especially with faster sweep rates. On top of that, each phaser has its own mix wet ratio knob. This will simply allow you to decide how much of the dry and wet signals you hear at the end of the signal path. Bear in mind that changing the mix ratio changes the depth of the notches. 
the deepest notches occur when the mix ratio is at 50%. You can also use the newly introduced reverse feature to introduce stereo inverted modulation in the right channel for both phaser A and phaser B. In each phaser, there are two dedicated switches that allow you to apply this inversion separately for generator 1 and generator 2. As mentioned earlier, the pedal is a super fun expressive feature often seen with the original hardware unit. In our enhanced emulation, it can behave either as the source of the modulation movement, controlled by an external MIDI device or DAW automation, or as our additional envelope follower feature, which I'll demonstrate now. An envelope follower takes the waveform of the input signal and creates its own followed waveform shape that serves as the modulation source for various destinations. In our case, that's the phased signal. In Phaser Bytron, it can be utilised in two different ways. The first one allows us to use it to control the Sweep Generator 1 rate control by setting its switch to pedal. And another one is when we set the phaser A or B mod source to pedal with this switch. Now, neither phasers are modulated by the generator's sweeps, but instead by the envelope follower. Okay, that's all for now. We hope you enjoyed hearing this Space Age phaser in action. Check it out, and thanks for watching.